much for your time. Uh, we do appreciate it, Liz. Um, a lot of tongue twisters there. I need to learn to get the word right. Car power ships. Um, but maybe just tell us the, uh, the hesitation, especially from Green Connection. Why are you so reluctant to have car power ships here in South Africa? So remember that car power ships were built as one of those solutions from 2021. We sit in 2023 and they still don't have the necessary permits they need. And even the access to the ports very clearly says that only if the, um, the relevant permits are granted. So they don't just have blanket access. They still have to go through the environmental approvals and the safety um, hazardous kind of, you know, any other permit that's necessary. And I just want to, if you remember, there was general outcry um, at the 20 year period, is really, are we going to be in an emergency for 20 years? And if we now rely on 20 year floating gas, well, floating kettles, as one could call them, then um, we are not then investing in power on land that would then give us our own assets. Because at the end of this time, car park can up and sail away. And so those Africans have paid all this money and we have no infrastructure left, you know, on of our own. So one of the things that we have been concerned about is what are these costs? You know, we've seen the, the rand to the dollar shift. Um, it's also linked to the international gas price, but exactly how? And given that car power ship appears to have decided they need X amount of money to make the deal work, and therefore we've been, we've been told we're going to spread this over 20 years. So if we make it shorter periods, then we assume that the price will go up. And then we have to look at the gas um, to power. These are potentially hazardous uh, processes. Um, you know, how are we going to make sure that there's no big accidents with gas explosions? And then we have to come down to them sitting in a port for 20 years. What is the impact on the ecology in the coast around there? And, and that is one of the issues of the reasons why we need an environmental approval. And the fishers, for example, in the coast who depend on those resources would also need to be consulted and to understand if their livelihoods would be affected and how um, and whether that's worth it. So because we, hmm. we need to look at where, yeah. Yes, sorry, Liz, let me just jump in there. And I'm glad you touch on uh, the yes. environmental impact of this because the, the conditions attached to the, the deal that has been signed um, or the notice that has been signed by the Department of Transport is that all departments or relevant departments involved need to approve this. And now the Department of Environment has has not agreed to come onto the show to speak about this because they have indicated they are still considering this. There are serious environmental concerns around this. There are many factors to this car power ship deal. Um, but let's, let's just look at the environmental impact here. You're looking at possibly a thousand megawatts or just over a thousand megawatts. How is that an emergency energy plan? It's a 20 year deal. It's 200 billion rand um, that it's probably gonna cost our government. But what is the return on investment when at the end of the 20 years it's going to leave our environment far off worse than what it is at the moment? So, so this is the question. What do we get as the people of South Africa after we've had foreign ships in our waters for 20 years and all we've done is pay? And we don't even know how much we're going to pay. And at the end of the day, what, what the environmental impacts have, how, well, that we've submitted and what we've seen in the in the paperwork is that there are potential impacts with sound because these are going to basically be noisy ships in a harbor for 20 years and that this sound could um, impact on marine uh, uh, living resources for example fish and then also on bird nests so from a biodiversity point of view there's an issue but the other issue is when you are looking at fish, the fish will move away from the sound if they can. 
if there is a, a nice sheltered space where fish uh, hatchlings or, or, you know, baby fish basically are sheltering um, in order to grow into big fish, to put it bluntly, then if those areas are disturbed, then those small fish that move away from there are then likely to be preyed on by bigger fish, which means you don't get the, the fish growing to full adulthood which means that you're not impacting on the livelihoods of those fishes that depend on that resource. Mm-hmm. Um, so these are the kinds of environmental issues that you know, scientific evidence has been put forward and the department needs to assess that. We must just remember they failed the first time around, CARPA, didn't get their EIAs. Mm. I think um, this is the second time. Yes, uh, I mean this has been back and forth. Uh, we do know that there have been many attempts to sign this off. Many would say that the the Department of Transport signing it off was almost done in a hush-hush manner, um, especially because the President and the Minister of Electricity have been really reiterating this emergency energy um, that we urgently need to deal with load shedding. I just want to ask, Liz, um, in conclusion, what are you going to do as Green Connection? Because uh, there's a lot of pushback around the car power ships. There's obviously other concerns. But from an environmental um, aspect, what are you going to do? Will you be heading to a court? to try and stop this. What is your next plan of action? So from our perspective, we work on good governance. So if we look at the environmental um, case at the moment, we don't believe that there's a case for them. We will wait to see what the Department of Environment says and if necessary, and we believe they've made the wrong decision and we need to take it to court, then we will do so. In regard, our lawyers are currently looking at this latest um deal thing with the ports to really have an understanding of whether this was a legal legally uh, legal process. Um, so I think that's what, and we also just have to remember as a parting shot is even if these things were approved tomorrow, it would take them a year, they say, to connect. That's not going to help us this winter. Mm. And there's a lot of other power plants which we hope will be coming online soon. Certainly. I think there's a lot of issues at play here and hopefully we'll get clarity on that. Thank you so much for your time this evening. We do appreciate it. That was Green Connections Strategic Lead, uh, Liz McDade.